Hey everybody, happy Monday. Hope everybody had a restful weekend. Mine was kind of unintentionally restful because uh, there's some people go over doing some work finally and on the house. And so Momo and Legarto and Scout, they had to be up in the uh, in the the bedroom so that uh, they didn't get in the way and Momo didn't get exposed to too much dust because he gets all sneezy. And so I was going over the boss fight bios, uh, which were very cute. Uh, I got quite a few chuckles out of them. So, uh, yes, the the writers on Boss Fight are, for people who don't know, um, there was a Kickstarter tier where people could sign up to be writers and they get to write a backstory on uh, one of the characters. Eventually, they're going to be turned into um, Dungeons and Dragons character sheets for people's, like, D&D and Pathfinder games. So, um that's being done and it's very funny and and they they put some stuff in that I never would have thought of and I'm like I can work with that so uh part of the reason I like this stuff is for me I am happy with anything that eliminates possibilities because I'm like oh I could do this and oh I could do this and so anything that cuts down on the variables I'm thrilled with um and that brings me to the topic of today I've been reading a lot it's sort of split between Tokyo Game Show news and um uh um the the sort of culture war stuff that's going around and some of the real hot button stories that have been flying around gaming I have deliberately not uh touched on some of those hot button stories because I there are some people I just think some personalities I think are better to just not have a lot of attention because as long as they continue to get attention, I am facilitating the whole phenomenon surrounding them and I don't want to do that. So um, this video probably won't be one of the higher watched because it doesn't have some like jazzy title like oh critical thinking who wants to look at that for drama so the best thing you can do is if you like this kind of content become a patron uh we'll do the gloria one patreon patreon you should become a member patreon patreon.com slash liana k because i think this stuff is important but like i said it doesn't game the algorithm it doesn't do anything like that um and so on and so forth but i think it's important because especially this time of year, like August leading into September, we're in peak pre-holiday hype. And also th there tends to be weeks in August that are very slow news weeks. And that's when all the let's get rage clicks think pieces tend to come out in part because people are just desperate to keep their site traffic up uh, um, in part because um people go away on vacation and so they have to bank articles that are somewhat evergreen, you know, not responding to the news of that week. And so you tend to get these culture pieces that uh, may or may not be solidly based in critical thinking. And so I wanted to remind people of um, why critical thinking is important and what it actually means so that people can go forward less... I'll say more insulated against some of these these um, uh, psychological tricks that articles use to to grab you in. And I want to be clear, a lot of the reason that these articles are the way they are is because the people who make them are themselves not thinking critically. They're they're engaging in emotional reasoning. And so they themselves are falling prey to some of this stuff. I want to try to help you guys not not fall prey to because uh it, it's it, you can't go through life constantly outraged um so critical thinking doesn't mean being negative in fact um a lot of the really negative think pieces that are out there it's not that meaning of the term critical um a lot of um you know incredibly negative pieces are, compl are are significantly devoid of critical thinking because if you're going super negative on video games which let's face it in the grand scheme of things um 
shouldn't require that much outrage and indignation. You're really not engaging with critical thinking. Um, it Critical thinking, the short way to describe it is that you're solving problems systematically rather than by emotion or intuition or, or what some people would call instinct. Um, and that's hard to do. It's hard to kind of catch yourself. Um, I've kind of developed a habit of, <laughs> you guys will see it on Twitch a lot if, if you join. Uh, tomorrow will probably be a bit late because I'm, uh, I'm lecturing at Sheridan College tomorrow. Uh, my, my, my semester thing, like every semester I go in and do it. So um, that'll be, and that's at like five o'clock. So I won't be home till... Uh, yeah, it might be as late as eight. I'll, I'll let you know. Check the tweeters. Um, but one of the things that, you know, has me lecturing at colleges like that is my abil ability to think critically and come up with, come up with nuanced analysis. The, the professor's introduction to me always involves the word nuance, that I don't come down hard on one side or another of an issue. And, and that doesn't mean I don't have firm beliefs on the issue. It's just like, look, if these problems were really that simple, they'd be solved by now. And uh, one of the things I find really lacking in a lot of game journalism now is an attention to relevance. Treating, you know, the fact that, you know, for instance, Characters have capes instead of, you know, spandexy butts often visible to, to the player. Is this really relevant? Does this matter? Not really. And, and that's when things start to become, you know, you risk becoming a laughing stock or it, it ends up being sort of this meme of absurdity. And you see a lot of that in games articles that go viral. Um, central critical thinking point, just because something goes viral, just because something is popular, doesn't mean it is right. It doesn't mean it is terribly important. It just means it was the article that inspired that much attention that day. And so many of them are so frivolous on both ends. And that's not the fault of the people writing the articles. That is the fault of a lack of an editorial process at these game sites, in part because they want to do things cheaply as possible, in part because they want to do things quickly as possible, and in part because, let's face it, when people are as overworked and worn out and jaded and all that stuff as people who write about video games are, they don't practice critical thinking themselves. If you aren't looking after yourself, if you're not, you know, eating properly, exercising regularly and um, getting enough sleep, it's very hard to not respond emotionally. And one of the things that goes first in emotion is links between ideas. You know, you have this pile of evidence and this pile of evidence and I've seen a lot of stuff lately, and again, I'm not going to call attention to certain things because this is a general trend, but someone will say, I have this pile of evidence that disproves the original story or the original version of events. And I read it and I go, well, not quite. Some stuff, absolutely. And you know what? There comes a critical threshold where if enough pieces of a story fall apart, you can go, okay, this story is incredible. That's, that's fair to say. But other stuff, you know, you, you, an assumption that every utterance someone puts on the internet is the absolute truth, unless it's inconvenient for you, you can't assume that, right? So if you're taking someone's version of events so you're comparing what they were saying on Twitter at the time compared to what they're saying now if it involves the promotion of a product for instance there's a very good chance that they were BSing somewhere along the line for instance if you know somebody's working on a game and they're saying, oh, it's really great. Everything's going awesome. I'm so excited with the development of this game at the time, like in the in the lead up to the like the hype period. 
And then they come out later and say, I knew the game was never very good. Uh, you know, a person not practicing critical thinking skills would go, yeah, but at the time you said it was amazing. The most likely thing there is that they were trying to hype it up because that was a part of their job at the time. And yeah, they were lying then. Now that means the next time they say a game is really great, should you believe them? Well, no, you have reason not to. But that doesn't mean they were telling the truth at the time and lying now. And I'm seeing a lot of those shortcuts lead people to, because of the framing of an issue, that I, I'm seeing a lot of people go, well, this proves this point that they were already inclined to believe and it doesn't prove that point at all. You see a ton of that in politics. You see uh, right now up in Canada, um, the media is running with the idea that there is no agreement about whether a particular set of policies for the last government actually had the middle class get ahead because of one analysis from a conservative think tank that our, our government, our outgoing government right now is liberal. Um, but one analysis from a conservative think tank said, no, it actually on the whole cost Canadians money because they didn't include in a very lucrative um, child benefit that most families of that all well all families of four. If you've got kids, you 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 benefit from from this uh, from this child child benefit. Uh, they just left it out on on ideological grounds. And so this piece I read was like, well, there's no consensus. And I'm like, but there is consensus among everyone who included, even nonpartisan groups that included all the data. You're saying there's no consensus just because one conservative think tank with an agenda and ties to past conservative governments decided to say, oh, grumble, 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 we fudge the numbers and here we go. That's not critical thinking. That's not really informing a person who only has a few minutes may only read the headline. And and this is a mistake a lot of journalists make when they're like, well, I have to tell both sides. There's a difference between knowingly perpetuating misinformation and providing a balanced, a balanced viewpoint. This is the sort of thing that make people say, well, there's no consensus on climate change because that tiny, tiny, tiny portion of people who think it's not real. If we eliminate the 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 people with agendas, there is consensus that climate change is real and man-made, things like that. But there are still very nice people out there who don't believe climate change is a thing because they've seen a couple articles. And this is the sort of trouble we get into when you don't use critical thinking because critical thinking is the best way to get the best possible solution, the best possible possible opinion recognizing that a lot of this stuff really isn't simple it is in fact very complex and you know a lot of these very complex issues uh, you know don't line up with simplicity because again if these were really simple things to solve then you know uh, people would have done it by now the thing is, the the best way to critical thinking, at least the thing I find works the best, is, thanks, iPad. Um, oh, believe it, these area rugs are under $100. Yeah, critical thinking, the area rug is this big. I've fallen for that before. Um, but uh, the thing I find about critical thinking, the best thing to do is to break the problem into little modules of what is known simple pieces that may come together in a complex pattern, but the individual pieces are simple. This is a known known. This is a known unknown. Okay. What are the unknown unknowns? And when you zero in on those unknown unknowns, that's when you start getting really nuanced, interesting clerical thinking. And that's where my analysis of certain things in gaming is frequently not lining up with popular opinion because I don't go for, oh, what's easy. I go from, wait up, 
How much do we really know? And I know this is a habit of mine that drives a lot of people crazy. And it's led to a lot of ad hominems and accusations of fence sitting and stuff like that. Um, I'm, you know, you're not sitting the fence if you're not sure the fence is there to begin with. And often there is no black or white, easy separations between people. These pigeonholes we tend to like like to put people in uh, often will just make you seem like a real asshole. Uh, a, a comment I loved from Friday uh, was one person summarized uh, their experience with with the Gamergate controversy was, you know, I came home, I came home from work. I was really tired. I took a shower and here it is. I work overnights. I get home, I shower. I eat, I go to sleep for eight hours. When Gamergate happened, I was asleep. I went to bed with the opinion of Kotaku is shite. Eight hours later, I wake up with the opinion of Kotaku is shite. And I have suddenly become a woman hating racist Nazi scum. And the person said, now I'm a libertarian, so I'm used to being called a woman hating racist Nazi scum. Uh, but getting called one for having the opinion that I had for as long as I knew Kotaku existed was surreal. And for the record, they said, P.S. Kotaku is shite. It has always been shite going back to the days when it crapped on the GameCube and Wii for not enough graphics power and shovelware. Um, so that is that is how a lack of critical thinking can cause you to lose the very people you're trying to gain in terms of persuasion. And one of the things about persuasion is you can't persuade everybody. You can only persuade the people who are persuadable. And that's a huge mistake that people make in their rhetoric when they write about anything, but especially games. I have read so many articles of late that start with this huge catch-all idea, starts with a title that is misleading because it oversimplifies the nuance of the article. Then it starts in this huge catch-all thing and then slowly refines so that the last third to quarter of the article was what the, the writer was really wanting to talk about. And that reads like a first draft to me, first of all, but it also shows that no editor was there to say, look, one of the things that that um, an academic writing instructor taught me is you write your first draft, then take your final paragraph that you thought was your conclusion and put it right at the top because that's your opening statement. That's what you're attempting to prove. This isn't a journey of, of self-discovery. You're trying to persuade. You're trying to make a case and prove it. It's a neat little trick. Sometimes I want to write a, a, a meandering journey of self-discovery, but I'm doing that consciously now instead of just a tick or a bad habit. And it really frustrates me to see people, <laughs> I was about to say getting paid to write this, but no, that's not an assumption on gaming sites. Uh, but someone who is being published, it's publishing a first draft. That's not fair to the writer. That downgrades the quality of the site. And it's just this churn to get more and more articles up, hoping for a headline that will catch. And have people read and of course everybody knee jerks and see things that I shouldn't say everybody but a lot of people knee jerk and find things that aren't there and get upset based on you know not what the author said but how the author made them feel. And that's a real problem because again if you want to be effective and assertive at getting what you want from various companies that you interact with you actually have to put forward a fair argument. And if you're being too emotional and falsely accusing someone, people are not going to be inclined to, to be persuaded by you. You might shout them into silence, but that's not actually persuading them. And my big fear about gaming right now is that there's a lot of people just sitting down and shutting up and waiting. And the first chance they get, there is going to be a massive monumental backlash about the way games are written about and talked about and the overall shaming of the gamer that's going on right now. Because I read your comments, those of you that kind enough to, uh, to write them. And one of the things I'm grateful for is that I'm actually able to get high quality comments like this. And so I can actually see why people think the things they do instead of just what they think. 
and you know the the uh in- interesting thing is the number of people who when i talked on friday about why i don't use you know latin x on on my channel because my um viewers from mexico central and south america i was corrected by mexicans like hey we're latin american but we're not South or Central American. That's right. Mexico is part of North America. Um, Brazilian people I know don't consider themselves Latin American. So the, even even the catch-all that's dumped into Latinx is inaccurate. Never mind that the non-gendered conjugation of Latin is Latin. Latino, male, Latina, female, Latin, gender neutral. And the funny thing is that's what some people usually, that's what a lot of people went by in the 90s, in the 80s and 90s. Um, Just Latin. It wasn't Latino, it wasn't Latina, it was just Latin. No gender. And now we've got this ridiculous Latinx thing. And and it's interesting because the more I talk to people who are, you know, America's Spanish speaking the more I meet people who really, really don't like it because they feel like it's a term forced on them uh, by the, you know, the the American superpower kind of think tank phenomenon as opposed to something that they feel good about. And isn't that just completely backward in terms of progressivism? The idea that the minor, that, you know, this tyranny of the minority, that that people who are, um, you know, educated in America, who are the minority of people who come from these backgrounds, are forcing a term on people that they don't like. You'd think the LGBTQ plus movement of all people would be good with this would 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 recognize yeah you don't force a term on somebody that they don't like because then that term becomes a pejorative and some people may reclaim the term down the road but that term causes harm because it hurts and that comes to my last point about critical thinking is it is super important when you practice critical thinking to recognize that no one practices dispassionate critical thinking all of the time and one of the biggest mistakes you can make as an analyst is to reject or not give enough significance to the emotional component you you don't need to fall prey to it you don't need to share the emotional component but you do need to treat the emotional component as a as an either unknown known or a known known. It's something you know is there and it matters. And ironically, all of these culture warriors in gaming are neglecting to factor in the emotional um, response they're going to get using a particular tactic. And I, I I know this is so because of people who get very upset about the reaction they get. It's one thing if you don't know people are going to be upset about this stuff. But if you've been writing about gaming long enough, you know people have a hair trigger on certain subjects. Respect that. And, you know, there are people who go out there and just troll and they're not upset about the response that they get. They're happy about it. That was the intent. But that wasn't a piece written to persuade. That was a piece written to to uh, garner outrage and get hate clicks, which is valid, I guess, if you're doing it deliberately. I don't like that revenue model, but hey, it is is short-term, viable, great way to get your traffic up. Not great for your brand long-term, but still. So do you get what I'm saying? Like, this is not a simple thing. And the unfortunate thing about critical thinking is that there is no rule book to do it. You need to do it, get it wrong, do it, get it wrong, do it, get it wrong. And um, wisdom is a big thing. Wisdom is the underappreciated stat in D&D characters. Wisdom matters a lot. And you can't get a heck of a lot of wisdom 
when we're running people out of gaming, especially gaming thought, before the age of 40. This matters. Um, And on that note, I'm going to close with a response to a comment on people that got mad about the cat stuff at the beginning of the last YouTube video, saying it was somehow fake, or I was pretending that it just happened, that I hadn't planned it, because I could just start the video and go over again. Here's the critical thinking fail. I had restarted that friggin' video twice before that. I was tired of restarting it. And part of what I do here is that I just fire up a camera and here's what happens. Sometimes I will stop. I will redo things. God, some days I'll take five cracks at a video. But I don't have the the emotional reserves right now to do over and over and over and over and, and, and spend hours and hours and hours talking to a computer and edit it down and get it perfect. I'm still dealing with a strained voice. Uh, I can only do so much. Like my voice hurts right now and I've only been talking for 25 minutes, 26 minutes almost. So this idea that I just concocted a thing with the cats is absurd. It's a conspiracy theory. And if you stopped and think thought about it for five minutes, like this idea that people fake authenticity, that's absurd. But if you watch any of the YouTube tutorial videos, they do just that. They, they pick up them f- doing the camera and things like that. So people do do it. But I have no history of that. So it's bizarre to accuse someone of that without proof. That's how critical thinking doesn't work. That's how people end up seeming really foolish. And one commenter at the end of it was like, why are you getting so upset about this? I mean, I do content five days a week. You have to churn that out. And if you're like, what? You only do content four days a week? No, I do a special video only for patrons every week. It's usually far more involving cats than the regular videos. So Patreon, Patreon, you should become a member. Patreon, because everything about YouTube is garbage for creators making money. And that's why I'm moving more and more to Twitch. Okay, thanks for watching.